Well, hey everyone, it's Jeff from 7 Demo 7, and this is the evening of the day that I did the 125 miles an hour with my quadcopter. So, this quadcopter right here, in fact, it just as it sits here. Uh, this is the one I did it with. It's a Morpheus X frame. I'm going to do another video that's going to describe every piece of this thing, so I'm not going to go over that video with you guys right now. But I'm kind of, I want to go over the the backstory of how I got to this point of doing speed runs and uh, uh, a little bit of a, some information about that. All right, so I have my list here. All right, guys, so um, doing uh, really, really fast speed runs with my quadcopter really wasn't a thing I was ever going for. Um, so, guys, this is the MRM Reaper. It's a 195 millimeter frame. It's really minimalistic, and this is one of, I won on a um, on a, in a raffle, and uh, I decided to build it up, and I had some standard Emax 2300 kV uh, red bottom motors, just the standard ones, and I was flying around, and um, one of my buddies up at Kai Hill has a radar gun uh, because he does um, the power sloping which is where they go up to like 400 miles an hour, it's crazy. Uh, so he has a really uh, nice uh, radar gun, and he's like, he goes, I wonder how fast you guys are going, you know, because you know, he's not into quads at all, and so he said, okay, let me radar that thing, and um, I think we radared it at like 83 miles an hour or something like that, and then the new RK props came out, the 5051s, and I, I started flying that around, he goes, oh, let me radar it again, I said, yeah, yeah, put the radar on it, and um, I think just by changing the props, we went to 95 miles an hour, which is pretty impressive. So, um, anyway, this is a really well-performing frame. It's super lightweight. It's got a really thin cross-section and everything. Um, so I posted a picture of this thing going 95 miles an hour on Facebook, and the really super nice people from Emacs said, Hey, we want to see if you could get to over 100 miles an hour, um, and uh, can we send you some motors to try that out? And of course, your answer to something like that is always a resounding yes. Please send me some free motors. That's really cool. <laughs> Anything to get the cost down in this hobby, right? Uh, so, um, so they sent me some motors. I happen to know Brandon and JD from Emacs are really awesome people. The guy, everyone from Emacs has been really supportive uh, on that. In fact, I've got the Emacs logos on this thing. And uh, you guys will remember that video. I'll put a link up here, but basically, just by changing the motors uh, to the Emacs new, the new motors, which are the S series, the RS2205 2600 kV motors, um, basically I was able to go 107 miles an hour. Now during those runs, I have a, actually have a feeling that we were actually going a lot faster. Um, I've learned a lot in this whole process. With the radar guns, I wasn't actually getting low enough to get an accurate reading. And like if you're radaring something that's up here, really high, you're not going to get an accurate reading with the radar gun. So even though I hit 107, that was documented 107, I have a feeling we were probably getting closer to 115. In fact, two days after that video, a friend of mine, Mark, who is a mindless um, FPV on YouTube, I'll put a link to his channel up here, he actually hit 116 miles an hour with a standard X-Quad. Um, it was um, like, I think it was like a schizo frame or something like that carrying a GoPro as well. So heavy setup and he was uh, flying around and he, he actually did that with a GoPro on his, on his thing. So I was like, man, so may, there might be a little uh, a bit of um, actual practice going into this theory that's come out lately about heavier quads being faster. So maybe a, a super lightweight setup isn't uh, the best uh, idea because you can actually get an angle and get more thrust going forward without you know, ballooning up into the sky. So that's, that's pretty cool. So after um, that video went out, and it's, I think it's had around 30,000 views now, which is probably one of my bigger, fastest growing uh, videos out there. Uh, of course, anybody that has motors and that they, they want to promote them, they'll send you, they'll basically say, they'll throw them in front of you and say, hey, do that with our motors, which is um, what uh, I talked to Vivian from uh, T-Motor. He just said, it would be great if you tried that with our motors. So I said, okay, send them, all, send them along. It's been a long time uh, since they sent them. Uh, uh, we've had a lot of rain here in Southern California, so and I also had to build another quad. Uh, so basically, I took every single component that was on here, I put it onto this quad here, uh, minus the motor. So I took the Emacs motors off, I put the T motors on, and like I said, I was kind of armed with a little bit more knowledge about how to get higher speeds with this thing. Uh, 
So this morning, uh, I took it out, and basically, um, there's a really, really nice gentleman who has, one, I think he's second in speed, uh, who hits like 130 miles an hour. His name is Jason Barslaw. I think I'm getting your name right, right there. Sorry, Jason. Um, but uh, he sent me these props. These are speed props from um, from APC, and these are 50/50 or five by five e props, basically. So. Uh, for you guys information, two blade props are faster than uh, three bladed props, but three blade props will probably get you better in, uh, do better in a race and turning situation. So, um, so anyway, I built this frame up. If you guys don't know, this is the Morpheus X from Skyward RC. I will put a link to their website down in the description below. But this is the frame I did it with. And I basically, I, I had it up in the air with some of the other props that Jason sent me. I did a, a a run with a 1300 milliamp pack at the Tattoo R line and I wasn't getting as high speeds uh, I think there's less milliamps to draw from uh, when doing those runs I was consistently hitting like 103 105 right around there with with that setup which is still really dang fast all right so so anyway I put I changed the props and I changed the motor and uh, excuse me I changed the props and I changed the um, the battery and I went up for some new runs and started flying around and like the first pass was like 105 and I was still really high and I started getting a little bit lower, a little bit more brave and I have to give a huge props out to Scott who's the guy who owns the radar gun. Um, he really risked life and limb to get these speed uh, readings from me. Now he had a little table out there eventually to, to, you know, to hold as a shield in case it did come at him. I said, dude, seriously, if it comes at you, you gotta shield yourself, which would... <laughs> Which, uh, this could be pretty deadly. I'll go over that later on. Um, so anyway, he was standing in the middle of the runway, and, and my friend Albert Kim, who also has a channel, he said, well, why don't you kind of fly up the hill and towards the runway and then punch it? Because basically you're getting, uh, you know, you don't have to follow the ground so much. You're actually coming, kind of coming up the hill, which is um, kind of what I did. So I was getting uh, pretty reasonable readings going up to about 115 miles an hour. And then I got, I just, you know, it's, it's, I just got into a groove and I actually, for my run that I hit 125, I basically, I was super low and s super lined up with the, with the, the radar gun because a lot of times when you're high, you're not directly lined up. So I think you're getting more of a true reading when you're, when you're basically flying right into the beam of the, uh, of the radar gun. So uh, when it was all said and done, basically we had 125 on the the radar gun, and uh, it was freaking awesome. I was like, I was happy with 115, but 125 I'll take as well. So, all right, so so that's basically the story. Um, uh, what you guys don't know is directly after that run, um, I put another uh, ba battery pack in, which is the another 1550 uh, milliamp pack from uh, Tattoo, and uh, I flew like for one or two passes. It kind of did a little bit of a hiccup in the air and directly after that I went for another uh, speed pass and basically I flew down the runway off the hill and basically something there was some sort of an error and it just I had no control. Flew all the way down the hill, way down the hill to the bottom of the eucalyptus trees on the very very bottom there. This thing came to a rest down there, uh, didn't break a prop Everything is fine, but I have a feeling that one of my ESCs are basically coughing out. It's they're they're not used to having these this amount of amperage run through them. These are 30 amp ESCs with a 40 burst uh, rating, and so I'm pretty sure I'm putting close to 50 amps uh, on on every one of these uh, ESCs. So it's about time that it, it gave it. If it it's about time that that one of them failed. Um, nothing got hot. Not, the motors weren't hot either, so uh, I really have to give T Motor up some some credit on those. So, anyway, that's the story of how I hit 125 today. Um, the your guys' next question is going to be like, um, did you get any video? Why isn't there any video? Either it's, it's going to be on video or it didn't happen. I understand that, guys. So so today was the first day I've ever flown these props, and basically I. I my intent today was just to go out there and kind of fly it around and see how it felt and see if it felt fast or not. Um, my DVR, which is this right here, is which I, I normally record my stuff with, was sitting right here on this bench, so I did not have this with me. 
Um, and I also didn't set up any still cameras as well, like on a tripod, like I normally would, because I wasn't really going for my speed run. So um, Scott just happened to be up there. He's and he go after my first battery pack. He said that seemed pretty fast. Let me let me get out the speed gun. So. He started radaring me, and I didn't have anything recorded, so um, I do have two witnesses, which was nice. <laughs> um, the other question is, could this possibly have been a false reading on the radar guns? Because that does happen. Uh, and I thought about this as well, and so what you guys don't know is last week, uh, with some of the racecraft prompts of 5051s, um, I was doing speed runs as well. It, it was with this copter, except it was with the racecraft props. And uh, and it was actually with a huge tailwind as well. So this morning that I did this with, there was zero wind anywhere. Like the flag wasn't flapping at all. It wasn't even moving. It was still air. So there was like 20 mile an hour winds. I was like, hey, let's see if we can get really fast with this this 20 mile an hour uh, tailwind. So anyway, I was only hitting up to like 103, 104, 105 at the maximum. And then I did. I lined up for a really nice one, kind of like what I did with this where I lined up just perfectly and he radared me and it said 134. 134, I was like, yeah! <laughs> but to me, in my head, if I have a pass that's 101, 103, 105, 105, and then all of a sudden it hits 134, I am, I'm I'm always suspect of something like that. So that's why I never published or even told anyone that I hit 134, because I don't think it was a true reading. Now, when, I'm, when I was flying this one today, I was getting consistently high readings, and then when I lined it up, it hit 125. So that's why I'm thinking, I'm, I am 90% sure that the 125 that I got with this this morning is a true reading. There's still a little bit of doubt in my mind. It's not that big of a deal to me. It's not like a big ego trip or anything like that. I have no ego, guys. So I'm happy with 125. I'm comfortable with that in my mind. So, eh. Take it for what it's worth. Okay, let me see here. Um, um, do I recommend doing this? And the answer to that is no. I don't. I, I don't recommend uh, doing uh, going for speed unless that's something that if that's just your thing. But I wouldn't recommend it for the normal uh, for normal people because, um, and I, I don't think I'm not a normal person. I just happen to have the right circumstances to try doing speed runs. So. Um, Number one, it is seriously dangerous, like deadly dangerous. If this thing ever hit a person, it would it could kill them. Um, I did that this this morning where it was me and two other guys, and there was nobody else around, so so I, I felt safe uh, doing something like this. Um, it is super hard on your equipment. I like burnt up ESCs. Um, you know, if you crash at 120 miles an hour, you're pretty much going to be picking up pieces at that point. So. Uh, I don't really recommend it, so uh, take that for take that for what it's worth. Um, and the other question is, will I do this again? Will I will I try and get a, a, another speed record? And the answer to that question is honestly kind of like no. <laughs> I don't find that it's that fun. It's uh, I mean it's it's good to have goals and stuff like that, but being doing speed was never my goal. So you know, <laughs> I don't really think I'll ever try to do it again. I mean. I mean, I could try and do it again for the camera, and you know, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna try to do it again. Now, I know Emacs has some new motors coming out, and they were saying, "Hey, we might send these to you, and that would be great." If if I, you never know. I might. I might try to do it again, but and uh, I know the Emacs motors are supposed to output even more thrust than these motors. So just a just a quick recap, guys. These are the T motor uh, F40 Pros, and they output about 1600 grams of thrust per motor that's like um, 6, 000, it's over 6,000 grams of thrust which makes it about 14.11 pounds of, of thrust for the whole quad which is insane <laughs> given how much these things weigh um, so uh, going above and beyond that I think there are some uh, Emacs motors are outputting like uh, 1800 grams of thrust per motor with like a 50 45 by 3 prop something like that so so um, I think you get to a point of diminishing returns I think there's a bit of a wall to like how fast a quadcopter can actually go because uh, Jason Barislaw is using 6s and he's hitting like 130 miles an hour I basically did 95% of his speed with 4S, so 
you know, the amount of power that you put into these things may not equate to speed all the time. So who knows? Anyway, tell me what you guys think about this video. Um, like I said, it's, 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 I'm happy to say that I, I hit 125. I'm happy with not having any video of it. Tell me what you guys think. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey guys, um, just a, a quick uh, afterthought note. Of course, I have to give huge props to Emacs, huge props to Jason Bearslaw, um, huge, uh, a huge uh, note out to uh, Team Motor for supplying the motors, Emacs for supplying the motors. You guys are really awesome. I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without you guys, and of course my subscribers. Thank you guys so much. So uh, once again, see you guys, and if I forgot to mention anyone, I, I'm totally sorry. Sorry. Bye.